sometimes, if all I do in a week is scrape the clay out of a mould, then, well, I'm going to make a video about that. But it does get much more interesting. Stay till the end. As much as I want this channel to be a series of fun, informative, and yeah, interesting series of project how-to guides, I also see it as a video diary for myself. Something I can look back on and see how I made something. This is definitely the latter. That was roughly two days worth of sped up there. Oil-based clay is a bit of a pain to get off such a interestingly surface mould, shall we say. I did two passes, as you've seen. The first one to try and get the bulk of the clay off. The second one to hopefully get the remaining out of the cracks. My tip here is to use a hairdryer on max to soften the clay before you start to scrape it off. A heat gun works brilliantly, but I imagine 99% of households actually has a hairdryer. Keep heating the clay every few minutes as you move across the mould. It reduces time spent from weeks to days. What really surprised me was the amount of clay that came off. I'd clearly forgotten how much I'd put on. This large old silicon bucket was full of scrapings from just one half of the mould. The small half at that, it's amazing. What I'm doing now, uh, my plan, um, it should work, hopefully. I've bought myself a really cheap paddling pool. Blow it up. I'm sure I've got the pump around here somewhere, but I couldn't find it this particular evening. So, resort to good old lung power to get it blown up. <music> Nearly there. Next, get a large tarp and line your paddling pool so the fiberglass doesn't burst it on your first go at this. I've measured this, it should fit quite snugly. Hopefully this will help the mould stay still whilst I attempt to remove the remaining clay. I must say it's very convenient I've managed to find a paddling pool just the right size for my leg length. We've got a petrol powered pressure washer, that's a mouthful. It's quite a beast and has numerous nozzles for, for different power settings. The higher ones will take your bloody arm off. Yay. Nozzle three gets it. No, I'll show you. I'll show you. <laughs> Bloody soaked. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Let me show you. 
the idea is completely sound. What have we done? This bit here, uh, a little bit there, it does get it off. It doesn't damage the fiberglass and the clay is all set safe. But you know, it's not going everywhere. It's not going anywhere. It's all contained. So the theory works. It clearly works. Um, um, the clay is contained in the paddling pool. The paddling pool isn't punctured. Brilliant. And it's cleaning the mold. Um, I'm sopping wet, so I need a change of clothes, car, and maybe it's worth doing this at the weekend, not eight o'clock on a Tuesday night. It's gonna get dark soon, but it works! <laughs> Even at this early stage, you can see the superb negative of the sculpt. Here's a few pictures of the sculpt if no one's seen it before. The details have really come out in the small areas that I've pressure washed off. It looks great. For a first go at this, I think it's pretty good. Few changes for next time though. Yes, clothes I don't mind getting soaked in. And I could do with it being lighter. For longer. Yeah, middle of the day perhaps? Most importantly, I spent an age after filming this video sifting the clay out of the water. Not fun. Next time, I'll use a large sheet that I can place on top of the tarp, but beneath the mold. The water should soak through the sheet, leaving the clay on top. I'll get somebody to help me wring out the sheet and, hey presto, in theory, instantly separated clay. Then just leave the sheet out in the sun to dry for a few days. Roll on the weekend.